want to start this video out by saying all constitutional rights invoked none waived as usual. All constitutional rights invoked none waived. We're going to get right into it. Now, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the girl. You know, I haven't talked about her much. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, 2018. You know, what was going on in 2018. I'm going to share some of Moses' emails from 2018 to the uh, American uh, justice system officials in Ohio. You know, that he reached out to and was explained to what was going on uh, in 2018. Okay, very quickly, I'm going to take it from the top here. Very, very, very quickly, because I just want to add understanding to this here thing, because a lot of people is like, well, what's going on? But I want you to I want you guys all to know that this this thing is something that was started a long time ago. This was this was started a long time ago. This situation was started a long time ago. My brother was a targeted individual, and we both knew that. He knew that, and I knew that, okay? And that's why I left Arizona in 2017 and went to Ohio to his house to stay there with him because they were stabbing his tires on his car, scratching his car. They were just doing a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, I had to go there because I couldn't believe what he was telling me when he was telling me the stuff over the phone. It, it sounded like a conspiracy. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I have to come there to see it for myself because I don't believe I don't believe that they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. I was just like everybody else. Oh, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. So let's get let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to start with is. There was so much going on in 2016. There was so much corruption going on against my brother in 2016. Okay. His wife, his first wife, the Chinese woman, she filed a divorce on June 14th, 2016. Now, she had expressed to my brother that she didn't want to get a divorce. Okay. Okay. She expressed to him that she didn't want to get a divorce. So it was apparent that somebody was telling her to do that. OK, somebody was telling her to do that. Now, um, once she filed that divorce, everything went to hell from there. OK, everything. He couldn't get no financial help. Um, he wasn't he didn't have the assistance from the wife, which who, which would help him promote his website and stuff like that. And uh, his online businesses. And that's how he was able to support himself because he was running his own e-commerce business, selling his courses and um, offering tutor services. And his wife, his first wife was helping him do that. She was, you know, um, helping him to uh, advertise and all that kind of stuff. She was helping him with marketing and everything. And um what was quite strange was after she filed a divorce under the direction of certain individuals, she filed that. And um, after she filed it, just it just opened up a door of a Pandora's box of so much. And I'm going to go through as much as I can in this video today. So I need y'all to bear with me. And quite naturally, I'm going to be all over the place a little bit because I'm passionate and I'm pissed and I want I, I, I want everything to be understood so i'm gonna start one by one we're gonna start with um the fact that after he filed his divorce i mean after uh the first wife filed the divorce on june 14th she she locked him out of everything she locked him out of everything so he was pretty much locked out of all the assets and everything you know that the marital property or whatever now what they tried to do is they tried to file that divorce and then they tried to force him to do an out-of-court settlement for $30,000 and waive all of his 14 years worth of marital property. And so, you know, he asked me, what should he do? And I said, you need to go to trial. So the, 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 um, the Franklin County Domestic Court 
allowed me to assist him in to uh, put together his trial notebooks because uh, we put together the trial notebooks for the divorce trial so they could figure out all the marital assets or whatever. They still stole 80. They still stole so much money. They still stole so much money. They adopted an alternate date of marriage. So even though he was married since 2004, they made it. They cut that off and they said, okay, well, we just going to say that y'all marriage just happened between uh, 2000 and uh, uh, what it was, 2004. 14 to 2020 so it was like six years that they only counted out of like 14 years okay so they did that to save the wife money and um for whatever reason okay now let's get right into it this is an email sent from moses email okay and the title of this email it's titled, Organized Corruption and Organized Abridgment of Rights Secured by the Constitution. Now, we're going to read it. Now, all y'all can see that this came from Moses' email, okay? And this is addressed to the U.S. Attorney of Ohio, Jessica Knight, okay? Let's get into it. He said, hello, Miss Knight. It is my understanding from doing some extensive research and reaching out to officials, I have found that the FBI owe a duty of care to me as a citizen of the United States. The acts committed against me give them jurisdiction to make an inquiry into the matter I complained about. It has been nearly one year since meeting with the FBI, and here I stand with matters that have gotten far worse. It's evident that my journey to justice is being thwarted and that the thwarting is very much organized and controlled. I filed a 42 U.S.C. 1983 against the state actors for their blatant disregard to the United States Constitution and my rights. They dismissed this case erroneously and followed no rule of precedent. It is clear to me that they are protecting one another, which is not unreasonable to suggest due to the continuous abuses of process I'm forced to endure. I want you to advise me of your requirements needed to initiate criminal charges against these wrongdoers. If you cannot provide to me those requirements directly, I will then make the request via FOIA. The FBI obviously did not conduct an investigation into the matter and things have now gotten worse and far more out of hand. The longer this goes on, it seems the more people are getting involved in committing illegal acts. I'm not going to sit back and let that happen. I have recently began speaking publicly about the issues and have an interview set up with someone from Associated Press to speak about this. These people, in parentheses lawyers, tried to rob me of my marital property of more than $250,000 and have taken my wife for quite a bit of money so far. When we met with special agent Matthew Kern nearly one year ago, things were not as bad as they are now. We have dirty lawyers, Todd Sedoti in parentheses, abusing bankruptcy and changing addresses every few months. We have the Columbus Division of Police using their officers to call and scare me at night and call me bitches via phone in January 2017. We have dirty guardian ad litems Rosemary Welch in Columbus, Ohio, who assists with using the kids as pawns and asking for me to be jailed while getting money from me monthly for no adequate reason. We have law firms hiding money and trust for my wife. We have dirty clerks in the bankruptcy court who refuse to file and timestamp documents. We have dirty clerks at the district court on Marconi Boulevard who erroneously filed our lawsuit without the jury demand and money damages. We have dirty clerks at the district court who tries to thwart appeals by receive stamping docs instead of time stamping docs. We have judges, both state and now federal, in violation of their respective oath to the Constitution, the United States Constitution and the state Constitution. We have bankruptcy trustees that don't want to do their job to liquefy assets to pay off my uh, marital debt. Instead, they just wipe the debt clean. We have employees of the high court, Ohio Supreme Court, 
obstructing file documents from the record so motions can be unsupported. All of this and more, and still I'm without my children, which is a right secured by the Ohio Constitution and the United States Constitution and a right now that has been abridged for about one year. This, e this email, by the way, guys, was sent January 7, 2018. So it was a year from that time that he went all that time without seeing his kids. This is sickening to me, and I need immediate action of some sort. I am filing a cert petition, which is a writ of certiorari is the formal name for it, with the United States Supreme Court because I'm not confident anyone in Ohio wants to do what the book tells them to do. Everyone is putting their personal opinion on this, and it's evident. I had to do all this learning of legal rules, procedures, etc., costing me time and causing me to take time away from work to do so. I no longer believe in lawyers, which has caused me to be self-taught in this legal field. And what I'm discovering is Columbus, Ohio, seems to hate due process. The Columbus Division of Police have previously advised us that that's just how they do things down there. Really? On what grounds? Since then, there have been other people complaining of similar conduct, namely with the conduct surrounding Judge Kim Elena Brown. She was just accused again of forgery and tampering with records by a prominent attorney by the name of Shemansky. Please see all attachments herein. I will follow up with you via phone on January 10th, 2018 or you can feel free to call me. You have my number. Please carefully review everything I have provided here and feel free to go on to pacer.gov to take a look at my bankruptcy case number 217BK55146. Also see my state civil case with the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas 17CV003086. Also see divorce case 16D R2358 in the Franklin County Domestic Court. Also see my district court case 217 CV595. Places I have been to seek a remedy to no avail. Columbus Division of Police, Ohio Attorney General's Office, Columbus Division of Police Internal Affairs, FBI Columbus Field Office, United States Federal District Court Southern Columbus Division. All right. So now that was the email that he sent from his email on January 7, 2018. Okay. Now let's talk about this meeting that him and I had with the FBI. Okay. Him and I had a meeting with the FBI. I want to say it was about March. March or February, February of March of 2000 and it was March of 2000. Actually, it was March of 2017. It was March of 2017. We went to the FBI Columbus field office. Now, this was the thing. We caught them. We caught the FBI on this matter and they said, well, we can't speak to you. They said, we can't speak to you because you have to have a referral from the police, from a, from a law enforcement official. So, so I, so I told him, I said, so I can't come in there and talk to you. And I can't come, we can't come in there and talk to you. They said, no, you have to have a referral from a law enforcement official. Now that's where, that's the first, that's the first place they fucked up. Because, see, I know these laws in and out, and I read these laws, and they, they, have, they owe a duty of care. So, like, for example, if there's any hate crimes, uh, uh, kidnappings and stuff, the FBI have specific jurisdiction over those because they are the gatekeepers of civil rights, of your civil rights. The FBI is the gatekeeper of your civil rights, not the police. OK, so they have jurisdiction when the police is not doing what they're supposed to do and the police is pulling people over and, sh and for no reason and shooting unarmed people for no reason. The FBI is supposed to knock at their door. OK, because that, those would be violations of federal law, your, your 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 constitutional rights and your civil rights and the Constitution is all federal law. 
Okay, the FBI has jurisdiction over that. So now getting back onto that, we tried to we tried to report that to them, and 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 they was like, well, you know, we can't hear nothing you got to say until you have a referral from a law enforcement official. So that was the end of that. So the next day, we woke up, and uh, I said, I said, come on, Moses, we're going down to police headquarters in Columbus, and uh, we went down there, and we talked to. Uh, um, uh, what the hell is that guy's name? We talked to the 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 the, the detective. Uh, I want to say his name was Thomas something. Anyway, I can't get his name right offhand. I have his card somewhere around here, but we talked to him, and uh, we was like, uh, "We need you to call the FBI because they telling us that we need a a a, 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 a law enforcement." officials referral before they even get involved which is erroneous because they owe a duty of care they supposed to see you and talk to you when when you have a problem they don't you don't wait for no law enforcement official because if it's the law enforcement officials that's that's messing with you then who do you got nobody so that's what right there explain why why they didn't do nothing for us when we went there when we went there we went there in march of 2017 and we met with Matthew J. Kern. Okay. We met with Detective. We met with Special Agent. I still got his card right here. Still got his card. Still got his card. We met with him in 2000. And 17, and we were in there explaining everything to him for two hours. Okay, this is the FBI. We was at FBI headquarters. We was at FBI headquarters for two hours. Okay, after we presented him our evidence, and after we pre after we presented everything to him, the evidence and everything we had, he sat back. And was like this. <sighs> Crossed his legs like this. And then he came forward and he was like. <sighs> and then he left out the room. He said, I'll be right back. When he came back. He gave me this card. He said. I don't give nobody my card. I've never gave him my card to nobody the whole time I've ever been doing this job. He said, the things that you've told me and showed me today. He said, here's my card. And here's my cell phone number. Here's my card. And here's the cell phone number on the back. I'm not going to show the cell phone number. Okay, so the question is this. We met with you to try to stop all of this stuff that I just read off in this email. Okay. When we were there, you said, well, can't you have one of their people just fix it? Can't you just get... That's not what you in business for, motherfuckers. That's not what you in business for. You are in business and you was established to go do something when we bring this information to you. But you didn't. And now we had an attempted murder almost happened. I almost lost my life. I damn near lost my life. And Moses lost his. Because y'all is some fuck ups. Y'all some incompetent, stupid son of a bitches that don't know how to do y'all fucking jobs. And it's y'all fault. I blame y'all. It's the American justice system's fault, specifically the motherfuckers in Ohio, at the Ohio Supreme Court, the Ohio Attorney General's office, and the Ohio FBI field office. Okay? Okay? Nothing was done. So here we are. We went all the way up to the Supreme Court with this shit. And the United States Supreme Court decided that they didn't want it. They, oh, we're not going to hear the writ of certiorari. Why? Because we only take 1%. 1%.
We only hear one percent of rich. We only hear one percent of the writ of certioraries that's submitted to us. Who set that up? That's going to change. That's going to change. Okay. So this message is for the FBI and the American federal government. You failed us. You failed us. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do to fix this? You failed us. Okay. So so is this where we, is this what we have to do to get justice in this in this in this country now? We got to wait till shit get worse first because if it ain't worse enough yet, you just don't hear nobody, huh? Is that what all this emails is that what all this stuff says? Cuz uh Jessica Knight sent the email back and said, "Well, at this time we're not able to 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 pursue charges." Okay? So, I want I want to talk to these people. I want Miss. I want to talk to Miss Knight again. You see what I mean? So everybody who's seen this email, this was sent directly to Jessica Knight at the USDOJ.gov, and carbon copy on here was Benjamin Glassman at USDOJ.gov, Justin Herdman at USDOJ.gov, Matthew Kern at the FBI. OK, so these is U.S. attorneys. These is federal prosecutors and FBI agents that didn't do nothing. Now we got a dead person and a person that was almost killed. OK. Now, let, now, now let's switch gears. OK, now let's switch gears. Now, I was telling y'all about that girl that my brother was with. OK, these are the facts before 2020. I didn't know that girl. I've never heard of her name. I didn't know she existed. I've never seen no older pictures of her. Never heard of her. Nothing. OK. All right. I didn't know her. Now, what they tried to do is they tried to manipulate the people of YouTube and they tried to manipulate the viewers because some of Moses quote unquote friends that we now know wasn't his friends. Um, they got together and tried to make it seem like, Oh, Mark lied. He did know this girl because look, she sent him a message on Instagram and said, this is this. They tried to basically twist what I said to try to make me out to a liar. So let me clarify that. Before 2020, I did not know this girl. In 2020, she did send me a message on Instagram saying, don't tell your brother I contacted you, but I was contacting you because I want to get you guys Lakers tickets to the Lakers and Phoenix Suns game. OK, and so, you know, I'm not a sports type of guy. You know, I got all these muscles and stuff. So people assume that I play sports or you know what I'm saying? So right then and there, when she said that, when she bought those tickets to the game, I automatically didn't trust that girl. I said, you know what? This bitch is the police. And that's exactly what I said. Excuse my language. It has to be said like that. You know, I'm a cuss because it's necessary. So for those who can't handle it, you might as well you might as well speed on and get peed on and get out right now. Because I'm going to be cussing and saying a lot of shit that's going to hurt people's feelings and that a lot of people might not like. But this this stuff is truthful. Now, we're going to talk about the girl. I told a lot of people that the girl was the FBI and I provided links in most of the videos. You know what I'm saying? I provided the links to show that, yes, the girl worked for the Department of Homeland Security and she was the FBI. She was. And what did they do? They went through and they killed all of those links because those links was to videos that other people put up showing that she was FBI. I didn't go out of my way to do it because I already knew what she was in the first place. But since we on the subject, uh, since they they went and they scrubbed the Internet. And took off her photos for Department of Homeland Security photos. They they made her uh, make her Instagram private. They they took her FBI workforce trainee information badge and all that shit. Her FBI.gov email, all of that shit. 
they removed it. They took it all off. And this is why. This is why. Because remember that little meeting I told you we had with the FBI? And they decided, oh, why don't you get one of their people to fix it? We're not going to do nothing. They decided that, so we sued them bitches. We sued them bitches. And so this is what happened. When we sued them, they ignored the summons. When we sued them, they ignored the summons. They didn't answer back. Okay, and we had service perfected on them. But they didn't answer back. They people didn't answer back. They didn't get a lawyer. They didn't do nothing. They people just didn't answer back. Okay. So because they were a defendant on our federal lawsuit that was filed May 8th. Now we have a fucking problem. Because now, y'all bitch was laying up in my house. Okay, we have a problem. Because now y'all bitch is spending my brother's money. We have a problem because now y'all's bitch went in, okay, switched to her PayPal to, to her PayPal email address, so she got all she had all his sh shit from his website going to her PayPal account, going to her account. Okay, she also has a joint account with him at what Schwab Edward Jones that she's been moving. She's been moving 500 a day, five, 500 here, there, here, there, moving money around. It's disgusting. This woman is a parasite. This woman is a parasite. This is no grieving fiance. This was a girl that was working. She was working. She was working. She was working. Yes, she was. And that ass got caught. So now the question is, when we get done with our investigation, we're going to come and we're all going to have a meeting with the Solicitor General of the DOJ. Okay? And we're going to get this shit cracking. We're going to get this shit cracking. Okay? Unprecedented style. All right. All these different people's cards we got. Let's talk about the child support office in Columbus. And let's talk about my meeting with Lori F. Torriero. OK. Now, I met with Lori. And I told Lori, I said, you know what y'all doing is illegal because this is what they did. They created a child support situation for Moses. Now, everybody know that Moses was living in Columbus. He raised his kids. He was always with his kids. He always took care of his kids. OK, what they what they did was they, they created a situation to where his wife go file a divorce. So now they're living in two separate residents and now let's establish some child support. They used the child support office to block his passport so he can't get out the country. We had a um, we had a, uh, a a GoFundMe that Moses set up to go to uh, London. You see what I mean? And uh, and what happened is we couldn't go because when we were about to go, we found out he had a block on his passport. So they blocked him to where he couldn't get out of the country. Knowing good and goddamn well that he didn't really owe that child support. Knowing that. Okay? Knowing that. So, you know, pretty much today this video was basically showing y'all that this is something that started a long time ago. This is something that started a long time ago. And that's why, that's how we was able to catch these people. They're caught. They're done. They're doomed. They're caught. They could pay for all the damage control they want to. 
Okay, they can make all the threats via email and via text like they been and make all of these threats. They could do that. But the bottom line is this. I don't give a damn about your threats. They don't scare me. I don't get scared because I don't care. I don't I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You can't see that. I don't care. I don't give a damn. But one thing I do care about is taking these people down and they're going to be taken down. And that's it and that's all. We ain't celebrating no 4th of July. We want some motherfucking justice and we want legislation to follow it. And that's it and that's all. The American justice system failed me and failed Moses. And if they would have did the right thing, he would be alive today.